What is up guys? It's been a minute since we made an actual video. All the parts, I've ordered a ton of things and everything is taking forever to get here. I got some racing line parts and it's been over a month now. They said they were supposed to ship originally like on the 9th and the 16th and then they were like, it'll be here at the beginning of the month. Still nothing, no updated tracking on that stuff. I got, um, I ordered my, what's it called? PM4 fuel controller. That was almost a month ago. It's supposed to be here today. I got my, I did get my P3 ethanol sensor in. This is just like the P3 part for the gauge itself. I'm still waiting on the eight foot wiring harness from USP. They make it themselves. And what their part of the harness does, it connects right into the ethanol sensor. And then uh, you connect this to that and it goes right to the gauge. So it should be a pretty simple DIY video for you guys once the rest of it shows up. Here, you guys saw in the last racing video, or at least some of you did. Not many people have been watching them, actually, but um, my third gear is giving me all types of trouble. You've seen it in the last Dragon video, too, when I said I had to tighten up my shifter stuff. So I did a little investigating, got a hold of Diesel Geek, and ordered a few new parts. One of the things in this package, which I'm slowly opening, is this slider. And... Uh, Mine was installed upside down until I realized it was upside down when I fixed it. And that was a while ago, like a while, while back. And, uh, and just over time, it's worn, what's it called, prematurely because it was installed upside down. So uh, I'm going to replace that. And then the, the nut on one there has been reused a bunch, and it's a lock nut. So or a new lock nut for them. Hopefully this will fix me not being able to get in the third gear sometimes. So there's that, what did I say? Um, fuel controller coming, ethanol sensor harness coming. Oh, I got a the, one of those real nice eight inch screens for the infotainment. Um, that shipped today, so it said it should be here Monday. So do a little DIY, DIY on that. And then I'm about to order, um, not the OEM, but the AliExpress um, digital cluster. And that one you can hook up, you can like directly put your Android phone onto the screen, like your screen right in front of you. So I could be like watching YouTube and Netflix or have my maps and feel full view and all that jazz. Um, probably gonna order that tomorrow actually when I get paid. Uh, we'll see. Like I'm still kind of on the fence for that, but it looks really good and it seems very promising so kind of want to order it but we'll see oh and then racing let's see um drag strips in texas open up this weekend there is what's it called streetcar takeover in oklahoma city next weekend and then the week after that autocross opens up in lubbock texas with the porsche club and then hopefully amarillo follows suit and then uh yeah, so the race season's about to kick up, for me at least. Just hoping New Mexico opens its doors soon. Um, we have like barely any cases where I live. I mean, it's a real small town. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. I know a lot of still, like the big states, New York and California and stuff, they're still, you know, closed and whatnot. But Texas is opening and I'm ready to race. So, <laughs> hopefully we can get some, some good racing in this season. It's only really been, what... March and April, so two months out of the race season got taken out. Kind of sucks, but still getting the car, the car dialed in. Obviously, I got, got the PM4 coming, so I'll be able to run full ethanol here soon and be able to see it on the gauge. So that's the end goal here in the next month or so. Get it on the dyno um, on 91 again and on, uh, on the 85, get you guys some results there. So many things, so little time. And shipping is just taking forever on everything. So I'm gonna go pull this intake out, replace these two bits, show you what I'm talking about. Um, you know, most of you probably don't run this or don't care, but for those of you guys that do run Diesel Geek, I'll show you what I'm talking about. While we're here in the engine bay, take a second. Lightweight battery, still doing me great. It hasn't messed up at all, even in the cold when we got that random last bit of winter freeze there. Got like seven or eight inches of snow, it was like 19 degrees. It didn't fail me. It did take a little bit longer to start, but it still started. 
Um, what else I want to talk about? Oh, the downpipe. Definitely feel a difference. Definitely, definitely feel a difference. Well, the next video I'm making, we'll be doing more draggy runs, trying to break into the 11s here, but that uh, downpipe should definitely help a lot. Seeing three to 400 RPM decrease to full boost, depending on which log I look at um, and gear and whatnot, but it definitely helps. Definitely, definitely helps. And uh, I'm really, really happy with that. And the, uh, what's it called? Pedal spacer. So I haven't been doing any real like uh, heel toe stuff, but I really like the way it feels. People have been asking. So A plus plus on the downpipe, pedal spacer, and the lightweight battery. All right. So the main thing we're changing out today is this piece, and you can see how it it's got quite a bit of play there. It shouldn't have any. And then this nut. Um, this needs to replace. I also put a zip tie on this because it was kind of flopping all over the place and I figured it would be good to have it, you know, still. I did that last time, but let's see. This shouldn't be too difficult to pull apart. Um, should just be able to take off the nut, take this whole bracket off, pull that out, put the new one on, new nut. Call it a day. We'll see. All right. It's, uh half inch get this baby off hopefully it's not much of a fight good get this guy off there we go alright so a couple differences here this is a totally different style this like washer piece on the bottom is independent from this I don't even know if this was the one included with the kit or not, but uh, it's going to trash. This should do a lot better. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on it anyway, and then uh, you can see the difference between the two. It's super hard to see on camera, especially because that one's black, but there is a... See, now my camera doesn't want to focus, but the black one definitely has less space in there than the white one, so I should get rid of some play. It's my fault because it does, it literally says top on it. And uh, it was installed upside down for a very long time. So this one says top on it. And uh, hopefully this is what fixes our, our issue. Fingers crossed because I'm tired of missing third gear or getting locked out of third gear. We'll see. All right, so you guys saw the play before and now there is literally, when I move, the plastic piece, it moves the whole, it's kind of like a bad, I should put the nut on to show you really, but there is no play like there was on the white one at all. So this should definitely help tighten things up. I'll throw the new nut on, should be good to go. Alright, well she's in. I marked it with a sharpie and with some goop to make sure, like if it does move, I can tell that it moves, but it should, uh, should change things quite a bit. Um, it's about the only thing I could think of. Like I said, I put a zip tie on, on the uh, clutch line to try and keep hold that still. I rebled the clutch. I adjusted the linkage. So, in the process of doing all that, I realized how much loose that thing was. And I got a hold of Diesel Geek, shot them an email, and then uh, figured out what replacement part I needed. And then the guy that actually owns Diesel Geek called me before he shipped out my order, and we had a good like 10 minute conversation and. Because he wanted to make sure he was sending me the right part, because usually that part doesn't get messed up. But because it was installed upside down for probably 20,000 miles, that's why. Anyway, dude's really cool. Really, really cool. And if you don't have a Diesel Geek shifter, or their Super Pan, or their bushings, you should really look into it if you're a manual guy. This is like the top tier shit. It's not some big company either. It's a guy out of Texas that just has a huge passion for Volkswagens in general, and has done some really amazing stuff for our manual cars so definitely check their stuff out I'll leave a link in the description um, they make three or four thing, three things for the Mark 7 and like a lot of older stuff too but I mean this is the biggest upgrade you can do for this car shifting wise is the super pin and the short shifter huge difference huge I mean it's quality it is really nice stuff I've ran this on my my Jetta my Mark 4 Jetta my Mark 4 R32 
and now this. I, I would have had one in my Mark V had I had that long enough, so definitely look into them. Oh, and if any of you guys are confused, I was talking about with the wiring harness. So I, I already, the Precision Raceworks kit comes with the ethanol hookup that goes to the ECU, but the tuning software that I use doesn't have flex fuel. So what I'm going to do is with that USP harness, it literally plugs right into the ethanol sensor. So it'll be just like this. I'll unplug this, plug USP sensor in, and I'm going to route it probably um, down and around up here. And like maybe tape it onto this harness, go through, and then come back down and then go through the firewall down there where I have my boost tap going somewhere. And then uh, once it's through the firewall, then I can solder together the wires from that harness to the P3 sensor. And then the P3 sensor just plugs into the P3 gauge. And uh, from there, you just make some adjustments. You enable the auxiliary settings. And then you, it tells you exactly what values to put. I might have to run a ground wire, which there's a multiple places to run a ground wire. And uh, it should work. Like, it'd be nice. My end goal, I mean, for the next, I'd say, month, month and a half, get this on the dyno, like I said, with 91 at 32 pounds, and then full, or at least, you know, depending on, because fuel content right now is not very good anywhere. So, I mean, at least E70 I'm aiming for. Um, get some dyno runs on that. It should make, like, 525-ish on E. Probably more if I wanted to. I'm hoping for like 470-ish on 91, so those will be corrected numbers at my altitude since altitude sucks, but we'll go over all that when the time comes. Other than that, brakes are great, battery's great, everything that I've installed so far since I've gotten home is great, other than I think I put spacers that were too big on the rear and they were rubbing, so I took those off and put like 7 mil spacers on. Shout out to my homie for giving me those. And now the, the fitment's pretty freaking perfect back here. I didn't film it or anything, but I just, I mean, that shit's like perfect. And it doesn't rub at all. So, very nice. Still running negative three degrees up front. But I'm excited. Just really want autocross to start already. I'm going to have to order tires here pretty soon. These are about, about shot, but. <laughs> Man, I'm just ready. Once this ethanol sensor's in and the, the torque bite, like we'll be moving. And I'll be done. I'll be done with power until I either build the motor or. I mean, that's that's it. That's done for power. It's need to start shaving weight. Um, get those radios. Get those screens in. Get the interior how I want it. I still want to get new seats. I was supposed to get seats. My buddy Justin in Denver with this whole COVID thing, and then I broke my downpipe, so I had to use seat money for downpipe and all this stuff. But slowly but surely, we're getting there. Um, I'm still need to get a daily so I can rip the AC out of this thing. I want to get it. I still need to get it weighed. I'm sorry I haven't gotten a weight yet for you guys since doing the lightweight battery and uh, brakes and stuff, but we'll get there. I want this thing under 3,000 pounds and over 500 horse. I think she'll be a pretty, pretty beastly autocross car. Like a lot of these, a lot of you guys watch the channel. Like this car isn't being built for drags. I mean, a lot, there's been a lot of new people on the channel, like since the season's ended. Like pretty much since I deployed. And this car is going to be like a straight up autocross time attack kind of car. Like eventually, like it probably won't even really get drag race because it'll be in full race car configuration at all times. Like I shouldn't even really be drag racing now with negative three degrees of camber. Up front, I got like negative two in the rear and all this. Like, it's not really made or being suspension wise and all that is not being made for drag racing, just so you guys know. Eventually, we'll have some carbon bits, get this thing nice and light, get a cage in there, race seats, and hopefully, I move to like Dallas or Austin or something where there's like a real track by and start doing like actual time attack days. And just, that's what I want. This car is built for the turns, not for the straights. Uh, eventually, I will build a straight line car. Maybe I'll just buy another R and swap parts around and make make what I want. And I really want something that I can tow with. So there's that. I don't know. Too many options. Not enough money or time. <laughs> but uh, all right, this video has been me talking pretty much the entire time. I apologize, but.
very much going on. So hopefully this works. I'll let you know in the end of this video if this works. I'm about to hop in the shower, go to work. So. Well, we're trying to get a draggy run in. There's too much damn traffic, so we'll get you. came out decent I really think that this shifter stuff like I was just saying fixed my issue um, there was quite an amount of play in there and I think just when I was moving the certain gears and speed and I, I don't know it was just just enough play in there to, to lock me out right, but um, I am gonna order OEM fluid get that back in there because I'm using some off-brand freaking I don't know it's been in there for not even a year but I should probably go back to OEM just cause. So um, I got, like I said, diff fluid sitting out there and Haldex um, ready to go. So I'll get the gear fluid and then knock out front, rear Haldex and trans fluids all at the same time here in the next couple of weeks. All across everything's about to kick back up. So time to do all the fluids. I need to order more high temp brake fluid since I had to put so much through the system. So get a bunch of fluids done here in the next coming weeks. Autocross is about to start up again. Super excited to see how this car performs. Really excited to see how these brakes perform. And uh, all the other little things that we've done. So, screen will be here Monday. Ethanol stuff. They said, I emailed them today. They said that that harness was supposed to ship today. They said it should be made and shipped out Friday. By Friday. So, we're looking next week sometime. You we'll have. The ethanol DIY and then the screen video at least so hopefully more racing goes down this weekend so. any questions comments concerns drop them down below thanks for watching I'll catch you on the flip-flop